Iran is world famous for exporting terror, and now they're exporting thousands of deadly drones to Russia. The Russians are unleashing them on Ukrainian civilians, terrorizing the population. The White House says Iranian troops are also on the ground helping Russian forces. Iran's complicity with Russia's war on Ukraine has serious implications for Israel and the United States. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. This is the aftermath of one of the many Russian attacks against Ukraine using Iranian-made drones. While Russia denies Iran is supplying it with drones, the Pentagon disagrees. What that means, obviously, again, we continue to see Iran uh, be complicit in terms of exporting terror, uh, not only in the Middle East region, but now also to Ukraine. These drones are, you know, a bigger, about, as, about as big as a person or two people, so they're not huge, and they carry a warhead, and the warhead can basically be used to slam into something. Now, in the case of the Russians, they're using this to basically terrorize civilians by attacking apartment complexes and going after a power grid and stuff. Seth Fransman, author of the book Drone Wars, warns Iran has become expert in drone technology and that Israel will likely face these kinds of Iranian-made drones. I think clearly in any future war, we'll see that drones will be flying at Israel and attacking Israel from Iran, Iraq, maybe even from Yemen, and also, of course, from Syria and Lebanon. This is a way for Iran to extend the front line against Israel to a 4,000-mile front line, and that makes it more complicated to interdict and stop them and predict them and detect them. But for Europe, the future is now. These are Iranian rockets. Uh, which are coming to Russia and going to be launched on European soil. They're going to kill European citizens, European energy infrastructure. It's well past time for the Europeans to actually start doing something. Naronha and Fransman say the way the government of Iran is cracking down on the protests in its streets and this unholy alliance between Iran and Russia are a wake-up call to the West. They're starting to realize that Iran doesn't share their interests and that Iran doesn't want peace and cooperation with the West. So it's sort of this common realization of just how dangerous uh, Iran has been. Finally, the West is waking up and saying, you know what, this is really not a regime that we can deal with. And the fact the Iranians are working with the Russians and now the Iranians are terrorizing Ukrainian civilians with the drones, I think really everyone is saying, no, 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 this regime is just awful and we cannot ignore how bad it is anymore. And I think that's a big shift. But the question remains, will Iran pay any consequences for its alliance with Russia? Right now, it's up to the U.S. and Europe. Gordon? Well, Chris, what can the U.S. and Europe do to stop Iran from supplying drones and missiles to Russia? Well, a few things they can do, Gordon. First of all, they can go to the U.N. and they can return what the U.N. sanctions had been. They were lifted in 2015. They could put those on again. Europe, for example, can impose an arms embargo on Iran. They had one from 2006 to 2020, but they let that expire. They could also ensure that the ballistic missile ban that is set to expire a year from now would continue. Now, one of the biggest things they could do, uh, Gordon, actually, is they put the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, on the terror organization list. They could sanction members of the IRGC. And actually, Gordon, they could also allow some of the planes that are carrying the drones to Russia, that they're also being used to fly commercially to European capitals. They could try to stop those flights. Well, how does this affect the ongoing nuclear talks? The Biden administration wants to revive the nuclear deal with Iran. Is that still on the table or is that going to now go away? Well, right now, uh, the White House, and a lot, I think a lot of people are glad to hear this, they've set the nuclear talks aside for the time being. Why? For one, they said that the Iranians are on the ground helping Crimea, help, uh, helping the Russians to use those drones against the uh, Ukrainian targets, including the capital of Kiev. And then they're lying about it. Uh, Iran's supply of drones to Russia uh, and all of this are making it very hard for the Biden administration to continue those nuclear talks. Now, remember, Gordon, we've talked about a lot. Those talks are going to give billions of dollars in sanctions relief to Iran. And, uh, and what's more, U.S. is concerned Russia may try to get not only these drones, but surface-to-surface -surface missiles from Iran to use against Ukraine. So, uh, so these nuclear talks are facing a lot of headwinds, and it's good news, bad news. The bad news, Iran is actively assisting Russia in the war against uh, Ukraine. But the good news for those that are concerned about the Iranian nuclear deal, uh, that the U.S. won't be able to agree to this deal, at least under these current circumstances.
It has to be humiliating for Russia to go to Iran and say, we need your missiles. We've run out of missiles. Uh, we don't have enough to conduct this war. And, and, you know, so we need your drone technology and we need your missiles. Uh, is, is Russia acknowledging that, that they have an ongoing problem with this war? Well, I don't think they're admitting it. But when we talked to Seth Fransman earlier about that uh, drone voice, he said, you know, Russia, this is the country that brought Sputnik. They have a, a you know, sophisticated nuclear program. Uh, they have lots of sophisticated uh, weapon systems. But uh, they're turning to Iran, which is really, uh, you know, an expert and a, and a world leader in drones. But, uh, but it, it is kind of humiliating for this superpower, uh, presumably, to go ahead and get Iran from these relatively simple drones that are, that are basically suicide drones going into uh, uh, apartment complexes or some of the, uh, the electrical grid. Uh, but it's certainly a, down, a downgrade for uh, Russia. Well, Israel is, is being caught in the middle between Russia and the West. And now Ukraine is asking Israel for Iron Dome weapons, air defense system. Uh, is Israel going to supply Ukraine with those? What's Israel's response? Well, right now they're saying they won't re supply those kind of weapons. For, for Israel, they are in the middle. It's a complicated and delicate geopolitical situation for them. They stand with Ukraine. They've come out, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. But they also don't want to alienate Russia. And the reason for that is they, in effect, share a border with Russia on the Syrian-Israeli border, since mu Russia controls much of what goes on in Syria. And Israel needs Russia's help to stop Iran's military advances inside Syria. So on the one hand, Ukraine is asking for military aid, and particular, as he said, those uh, Iron Dome and air defense systems. And since Israel has some of the most sophisticated systems in the world, but so far they've just given humanitarian aid, not going to give the military aid. Just the other day, Defense Minister Benny Gantz said they'll not give any of those air defense systems. And, and Gordon, in a rare instance of unity, Former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, you interviewed just the other day, he said that the current, current government is being prudent and circumspect by not selling weapons to Ukraine. And he says he fears those weapons supplied on the battlefield could end up actually in Iranian hands and then be used against Israel. Well, let's talk about the Bible. Is, is, is there anything in Bible prophecy that would show that there's a, a coming alliance between Russia and Iran that would then turn against Israel? Well, it does talk in Ezekiel about an alliance with, uh, with the uh, country from the north as well as Persia or when modern day Iran uh, talking, uh, getting together against uh, Israel. So prophecy people that are studying this uh, certainly look to both Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 as a possible uh, prelude to what's going to happen. And they look at the current events right now, this growing alliance between Russia and Iran. Uh, in, and you, when you look at that through biblical, the lens of biblical prophecy, uh, you really stu do see this kind of alliance lining up with what the prophet Ezekiel said about 2,500 years ago. All right. Well, Chris, thanks for the insight, and let's continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem.